Republicans had an overall good night up and down the ballot in last night's primaries. What is up, people of the internet? It is me, Real American, back in with a new video, and today it is time to do a postmortem of last night's primaries because everyone, for the first time in a while, I could say that we actually had an overall good night. Now, there are obviously some very bizarre results and some L's here and there, but I would say for the first time in a long time, I could say that, yeah, we actually had some significant victories up and down the ballot, but it wasn't perfect, but I would say this is one of the better election nights we've had in a while. Now, before we continue with today's video, I hope you enjoy these type of videos. If you do, smash the like button down below, subscribe, share with your friends, hit that little bell, follow the social media accounts in the description down below, and of course, join the channel today. Again, folks, all support is greatly appreciated, and uh, yeah. Now, let us get into it, and let's start with South Carolina, and I gotta say, it was a very good night in South Carolina, except for one race. And you know what? Let's talk about it. South Carolina 4th. Listen, this is getting ridiculous with Trump's endorsements. All right, he's the reason William Timmons won. And for those that don't know, William Timmons is one of the most egregious rhinos in the house. Well, look at this. He won by three points, despite the last second endorsement of Trump. So you're telling me Trump openly saved a rhino like this. This isn't the first time he's done this. In fact, I think he's done this like 20 times this cycle. It is getting absurd with some of these endorsements. I understand that, okay, not every incumbent can lose, but really? You endorse William Timmons. And the only reason he did this it was to spike the Freedom Caucus. Adam Morgan was the Freedom Caucus candidate, which, who gives a shit? Who cares that he's backed by the House Freedom Caucus? It doesn't matter. Adam Morgan was clearly the better option. But for whatever reason, Trump thought, hmm, I'm going to waste my endorsement on Timmons. And it turns out, yeah, the Trump endorsement is strong. It, it probably did save Timmons here. Hell, he could have stayed out of the race and Morgan probably would have won. I, I just don't get Trump sometimes. You have to pick good people. And I understand you can't endorse it in every single primary. But the last two to three weeks, we saw the same thing with Tony Gonzalez, right? Brandon Herrera would have won. He would have absolutely won if he had the Trump endorsement. And for whatever reason, Trump was like, no, I'm not going to back him. And here, he actually backed the Rhino over the America First candidate. If you stayed out of the race, that's one thing. But to endorse him, that's bad. That's, that's beyond, you know, comprehension, in my opinion. This is another Trump L that he has to wake up to. He has to wake up to the fact that He's endorsing these shitty people that don't like him. They don't support his agenda. They're going to backstab him. And I hope Trump realizes, uh, yeah, I'm supporting the wrong people in a bunch of these races. I have the opportunity to completely change the Republican Party. But I would say this is a sign that the Trump endorsement, it's not 100% a guarantee. Because, like, five years ago, if you got the Trump endorsement, especially in the primary, you're going to win. You had, like, a 99.9% .9 chance of winning. But now it's like, hey, wait a minute. Trump's endorsing these people, and they're barely winning. They're barely cracking 51%. That's a sign that, hey, maybe there's a chance that if the Trump endorsement sucks, we could still beat it. And I do think we're getting to that point where the grassroots of the party is realizing who's actually a good Republican and who's a crap one like William Timmons. So I do think there's actually some good news out of this where, hey, we might have some chances of, you know, taking down some of these bad rhinos, even if they got the Trump endorsement. So that's the only positive I could take away from South Carolina's fourth. But as for the rest of South Carolina, they put the team on their back. South Carolina third, no matter who wins, 
we are getting a really good Republican. Like, a really good one. Now, I prefer Mark Burns. It sounds like he's the Mark Robinson of South Carolina. But apparently, Sherry Biggs is also pretty good. Now, I wish it was the other guy. I think his name was Jones. But it sounds like no matter who we get here, we're getting a good conservative. So I would say, yeah, that's a good night in District 3. And South Carolina won. Nancy May successfully fended off the McCarthy people. I can't believe that I support Mace now, but that's 2024. And Nancy Mace has had a great redemption arc. I think she realized, hey, wait a minute. What I was doing beforehand was actually pissing off the average voter. I should maybe, you know, try to appease them and try to be like the Republican voter wants me to be. And, well, it's paid off in dividends. She won by 27 points against the Kevin McCarthy candidate. So I would say on the congressional level, that alone is overall a good night. Nancy Mace held on, and we got a runoff in District 3, but it would have been a nearly a perfect night if we took down Timmons. But outside of that, South Carolina had a big wave, and you could actually see it in the state legislature. You saw like six or seven rhinos go down. At the bare minimum. Some might still hold on, but as of now, there's like seven rhinos that are currently losing or forced to a runoff. And in most of these races, there wasn't that much outside influence. So to me, that sounds like the Republican voters finally realizing who actually gives a shit about their values and who's a fraud. So I would say there's a lot of positives to take here. Like we had a good night in the state legislature. I would say really good night. A bunch of losers went down. Or they came close to losing. And in the congressional races, we had two big victories. But it would have been a perfect night had William Timmons gone down. And that's Trump's fault. I cannot defend Trump for that endorsement. Now, there was a special election last night. And what the hell is this? Now, I want to be clear about one thing. This doesn't mean jack shit. This doesn't mean anything for November. The fact that the first thing the people on Twitter said was, this is a sign of a blue wave, should make you really wonder, do these people have any brain cells? Like, what? Do you really believe that a special election, which had, what, 59,000 votes, a very low turnout race, means anything for November? In my opinion, this best demonstrates that the Republican voter doesn't show up to these special elections. This, in my opinion, is the best piece of evidence we've gotten. That, hey, there might be some legitimacy to the claim that lower turnout benefits Republicans. Just look at, you know, Jefferson County. Micah really won by 14 points here. Trump won it by 38. But look at the amount of votes. Trump got 22,000 votes here. In total, they got like 4,000 votes. That's half of what even Biden got. So, you're telling me, this is not an indicator for, hey, maybe the turnout theory is correct, but no, it's an indicator that there's be a blue tsunami. I call absolute bullshit if you actually believe this. Just look at the turnout of some of these places. Look at freaking, you know, um, Monroe County. Really won it by 20. Okay? Trump won it by, good lord, 54. That's a 34-point swing in Monroe County. Look at how many votes. That's not even a 1,000. Biden got 1,600 votes here. The fact that Biden himself got more votes in this region, which is one of the most Republican parts of Ohio, should tell you, hey, maybe this is not a sign of anything, but... According to these people, this is a sign of a blue wave that showed Brown is going to win. Well, these same losers don't want to talk about Mahoning County. Look at this. It was 50-50, despite the Republican doing like 30 to 40 points worse in the rest of the district. Mahoning County, you could argue, saved them. It saved Michael Rooley. He lost it by 20 votes. It was tied. Remember, this county voted for Trump by only two points. 
So it only swung two points Democrat. That's it. So even in a blue tsunami, according to these people, which by the way, you can just look at the rest of this district to say, yeah, this is low turnout. Mahoning County still almost voted Republican. Hell, it voted to the right of Tuscaloosa County. I believe I'm saying that correctly. Do you really believe a county that's what? The whole county's like R plus 40, but I believe this is the more Republican part of the district or the county itself. Do you really believe that Mahoning County is going to vote to the right of a bunch of the, the district? According to these people, that's a possibility. Or actually, no, they're saying that's a fluke. But, oh, the Democrat almost winning a D plus or R plus 40 district, that's a sign of a blue wave. The fact that only 60,000 people voted here, which just in one county in the district, Mahoning County, Trump got more votes than they got in the entire district. There's no correlation to the general. This just shows one thing. Lower turnout races hurt the Republican. That's a fact. But either way, people are just going to say, well, actually, this is a sign of a blue wave. Whatever. These people are going to say it's a blue wave no matter what. The fact that the Republican almost won Mahoning County, I would say is devastating news for Democrats. Because that means Republicans are going to win this county no matter what. This county is gone for Democrats. This... This used to be one of the most Democrat counties in America. I believe Bill Clinton won like 70% of the vote in this county in 1996 or something. But now you have Republicans up and down the ballot just winning it like nothing. But I would say the biggest takeaway from the special election is, hey, Republicans, wake up. You got to realize that this vindicates what me and others have been saying for months the higher turnout helps Republicans at this point in time. How else can you explain this? I guarantee you, in November, Michael Rooley is going to win this district by 40. And these people are going to be, like, stunned. Like, oh, what happened here? It's because when you have low turnout, the only people that vote in those elections are college-educated people and boomers. And those voters are shifting Democrat. So no... No shit. The Republicans going to underperform, but this is still pathetic. All right, a 10-point underperformance, that's one thing, but a 30-point underperformance in a deep red district like this against a fake moderate is pathetic. But Republicans still want it here. But this should be a big wake-up call for the Republican Party. Now, I will mention, though, Chris LaFont still has zero votes. Yeah, the independent... Didn't even vote for himself. This could change. I think he's a writing candidate, but this is kind of a meme at this point that he has zero votes. That means none of his family members voted for him. That means not even himself voted for him. Either way, though, Ohio was a just disaster. I mean, what was this? The fact that he nearly lost this district is pathetic. The fact he did this bad in Washington, places like Monroe, Belmont, it was bad. Now, we had results out in North Dakota, and there really isn't much to say here. Uh, the congressional primary, it sounds like we're getting a slight upgrade over Kelly Armstrong, but that's not really saying much. Now, I supported Rick Becker, but I looked more to the guy the chat told me about Rick Becker himself, and Trump might have been right here about endorsing Julie Federchak. Now, I'm not saying she's perfect, but she is better than Kelly Armstrong, who is the next governor of North Dakota, which is an L, but it was expected Trump endorsed him, and yeah. Now, there was a fascinating referendum that happened last night in South Dakota, or North Dakota, I should say. I This map kept changing. One second, it was all yes. The next second, it was all no. Then it went back and forth, back and forth. It's like... What the hell's happening here? But at the end of the night, a age limit referendum passed in North Dakota, which would mean when you turn 81, you have to resign. All right, that's basically what it means. Now, 
And, and, and that's not just for the state legislature. That's actually for Congress. I do wonder, though, is that going to hold up in courts? I support it, but I could, I could see it where, hey, maybe this is not going to hold up in courts. Because in the 90s, I think a state tried the same thing, and, well, the courts said no. I do think we need age limits on Congress, but I just don't see it holding up in court. Now, we did have primaries in Nevada, but this is ridiculous. The fact that it took them, like, two hours to count one vote. Now, they did count a large chunk of the vote in two hours, but they took two hours to actually count the votes. The fact that we still have tens of thousands of votes outstanding, despite it being, what, like 13 hours since poll closing is pathetic. This is a primary. You have no reason to still have tens of thousands of votes uncounted. The fact that in South Carolina, we got 95% of the vote in in like 10 hours. That should be the bare minimum. But no, in Nevada, no, a bunch of votes still outstanding, but we're not going to count them for God knows how long. This should piss everyone off. Now, we did have a couple primaries, and Sam Brown won, obviously. He did about as I expected, 60% of the vote. I feel kind of bad for Jeff Gunter, though. He was the America First candidate. He just, he tried to pick up steam. He was a little bit, but that Trump endorsement killed any chance of winning. He endorsed Sam Brown, and he's going to be the Republican nominee. I wish him the best. I don't think he's going to win. I think he's a bad candidate, but... Maybe he could win. Maybe we could see Sam Brown pull off the upset. Will it happen, though? I don't know. I think it gets Jackie Rose that it's possible, but Sam Brown's one of those candidates I just don't trust. Now, as for the House, we did take one out, I would say. There is one race outstanding, which is uh, District 4, which I'm not going to talk about. That, that whole situation is bad with Lee. But I can't really talk about it on YouTube. Go go look it up, though. It's not a good situation. Now, as for the house race, we did take an L in Nevada. I would say it's Nevada third. You know, I supported Marty. For those that don't know, he was the Halo composer. I never played Halo, but everyone knows the Halo theme. You know, everyone knows the music from the original Halo games. They're legendary. So I kind of wanted him to win just for that reason. Sadly, he took fourth place. He did get 20% of the vote. But I would say a lot of people wanted him to win just because, yeah, he was a composer for Halo, one of the most legendary soundtracks ever. But outside of that, there wasn't much to happen in Nevada. And I would say overall, with that in mind, it was a good election night. It wasn't perfect. Obviously, the special election in Ohio was bad. South Carolina 4th was a disaster. We could have won here, but sadly we didn't. But I would say with the other results in mind, it was a net positive of a night. We had a lot of victories in South Carolina, had some victories in North Dakota, but just some of these defeats that we did suffer, near defeats like in Ohio 6, they should be avoided. But anyways, folks, thank you so much for watching. If you guys did enjoy this video, smash the like button down below, subscribe, share with your friends, hit that little bell, follow the social media accounts in the description down below, and of course, join the channel today. Godspeed. To all of you.